Hey everybody, welcome back to Beyond the Block, the tutorial based Let's Play series where I show you all the basics of Minecraft while also exploring our ever evolving world. I really appreciate y'all stopping back by today and checking out our new house that we built in the last episode. So if you missed last episode, we built this magnificent structure right here and I am super, super proud of how it turned out. I haven't done too, too much since we've last left off here. Basically, I just ringed around the outside, got some torches put up, made sure everything was well lit, made sure the inside was well lit as well. And today's episode, if, like I said, you missed last episode, is going to be devoted to the nether. The nether is a hellish landscape that is filled with baddies, lava, fire, and perils everywhere you turn. So, today's episode, we are going to attempt to dive in there. Now, there is going to be some preparation to begin with. So, in order to prepare for the nether, the first things first is we need to have really good gear. We already found a couple diamonds on our mining expedition, but we're going to need a few more in order to finish out the entire suit of diamond armor. We only have 10 diamonds to our name right now, so the very first thing I want to do at this episode is cut over to a quick time lapse, jump down into our mine shaft, mine up as many diamonds as we possibly can in about 30 minutes, maybe an hour worth of mining. Shouldn't take too, too long as long as we stick to our guns and stick to our methods that we've learned with our branch mine techniques and hopefully we'll get a full suit and then I will explain how we get into the nether and avoid any pitfalls. Now before we dive into the mine shafts down there we do have some diamonds like I said and we do have a good amount of iron but you'll notice that we've accumulated a stockpile of used weaponry and tools over here and I kind of want to show you something that we can do with that instead of just continually remaking the products over and over the tools over and over that you want you can actually go ahead and repair some of these so we're going to make an item here called a grindstone and if you click on the grindstone here you'll see the pattern that you need you just need a couple of sticks a stone slab and a couple of planks of your choosing will make a grindstone and you just need two items that are alike and i'll use these two stone pickaxes as an example here we're going to go ahead and put those pickaxes in there and you'll notice that together both of these are broken however when we put them over here we gain a little bit of repair out of it as well as a little bit of added durability so you see down there the durability on this one is 21 out of 131 this one is durability 4 out of 131 together it should just be 25 however it gives you a little added boost since you're giving it a repair over there now Word of advice, word of caution, if it has an en uh, enchantment on it already, it will strip it of all enchantments. That's why it's called the repair and disenchant right here. So be very cautious. If you have an item that you don't want disenchanted, please do not put it in here to repair it because you cannot repair it that way. So I've got a pretty beat up shield, but I do have the other shield as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the same thing we just did there. And instead of two broken shields, now I have a brand new shield. So I can throw that back on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and make us a few tools since we don't have any used up uh, iron pickaxes in here. Not to mention, I'm going to make us our very first diamond pickaxe. It is about time that we go ahead and pull the trigger. So the very iconic, Diamond pickaxe and let's see it in action here pull it out there bingo. There it is All right looking fantastic So we'll go ahead and equip that but we don't want to use it up too too fast So I'm going to go ahead and make a few iron pickaxes as well Let's say three more of those since this one is just about to break anyway I always like to make an extra shovel mm, And I think that might be everything right there. Well, I tell you what, let's go ahead, let's use up a couple more of these diamonds as well. We might as well just go ahead and use these up. So we've got, let's see, seven total here. We're going to need a new sword soon, so let's pull the trigger, get ourselves a diamond sword. Also, let's get our very first piece of diamond gear. We've got five diamonds left. Let's just go ahead and use up all five of them here. We'll craft our diamond helmet as well. All right, and we'll get the advancement cover me in diamonds. Our very first piece of diamond gear 
it's not much but you know what we got to start somewhere and i think we look pretty darn good look at there all right heck yeah we are ready for the mine shafts all righty everybody here we are back in our favorite little mining locale remember the diamonds that we found were only just a couple feet away from us on either direction here so Hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck. I'm going to go ahead and continue to branch down here. I actually never gathered up any of these resources I left down here. So I'm going to gather these up as well. And let's see what we can do. One of my favorite things to do is do a one hour mining session. So I think I'm going to go ahead and mine for one hour. And let's see exactly what we can accumulate in one hour time. And with that, that marks a hour. So I have stored everything that we found inside of a chest here. And I want to show you guys what we've accumulated after that amount of time. Unfortunately, we are not rolling in the diamond front as much as what I had hoped for. We ran into one single vein of it, and that was inside of a cave system, actually, rather than in the branch mine. So no luck inside of the branch mine with diamonds. However, you do see we ran into an abundance of everything else. If you're familiar with Minecraft at all, you probably saw in the, uh, the time lapse there that we ran through two different spawner dungeons there as well. And that garnered us a little bit of extra stuff. We got some pumpkin seeds, melon seeds, beetroot seeds. We've got a couple music discs that we don't quite have a music player yet. Uh, I ended up getting a, a bucket of lava down there and a couple name tags. So we got some diamond horse armor, two sets of gold, iron. Lapis uh, Lazuli, we've got a bunch of obsidian, which is going to come in handy here pretty soon. This is only obtainable, if you remember, like I said, with your diamond pickaxe. It takes forever to break with no enchantments. But all you do is go ahead and convert your lava into obsidian. Make sure, though, that whenever you do this, it is a solid block of lava and not moving so for instance let's say that we lay in the lava here we go ahead we let that flow a little bit now if we were to take this here and put a water bucket you'll see that it's going to convert this lava into cobblestone however if we put the water onto the actual source of lava there we go it will convert that source block into obsidian 
Now we did end up with a considerable amount of iron down here, some redstone, and a ton of coal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out four of our diamonds. I'm going to go ahead and craft up our second piece of diamond gear, which is going to be our boots. So we're going to craft up these boots, and then with the flint, we're going to take some of our feathers, some sticks, and we're going to head over here into the crafting table and make those into arrows because we can use as many as we possibly can when we're heading into the nether. It's always good to bring a nice fresh bow because there are some monsters in there that are better suited at range rather than melee. Now we're going to use a piece of flint for the tip, stick for the shaft of the arrow, and a feather to cap it off there. I'm going to go ahead and make all of these pieces of flint. Well, actually, hold on. Let's save one. Oof, almost made the big mistake there. We actually need one for a flint and steel here in a second, and I'll show you why. So let's make these other pieces into arrows. Perfect, now we've got 47 arrows stored up. I'm going to go ahead and put our feathers back in there. And let me show you what else we need. Now we actually don't even need to get into a crafting bench with this. We just need a single iron bar in that piece of flint that we just reserved for flint and steel. So this is how we create fires and you have to be very cautious with this because if you're not you could potentially burn down your whole house or <laughs> the surrounding areas. So let me show you exactly what this does. If you go up to a flammable object right click on it you'll see that it's going to catch that object on fire. And if you're playing in default Minecraft with the base settings on you'll see that fire will spread. You can actually turn this option off if you'd like, but I like it. It's just a, uh, it's authenticity. It makes it feel a little bit more natural. So we'll go ahead and just let this poor birch tree burn up. And let's go over here and rest for the evening. All right, let's swap out our boots here and finish preparing to dive into the nether. Now you notice I do have a couple other things on me as well. I always carry my golden apple because you never know when you're going to need it in a pinch. I have made up a couple more iron pickaxes. I know we do have our diamond pickaxe, and it is incredible. If you look at the durability, the max durability on the iron pickaxe is 250. The diamond pickaxe is way more at 1561. But I don't want to chew through this thing so fast because, as you can tell, diamonds are a rarity. So I'm going to go ahead and use up iron still whenever we're doing our grunt work. And then if we find any need for the diamond pickaxe, it is there as well. So... We've got all that set, fresh tools, our armor's still looking pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and make a fresh shield, and you know what, I might as well, we've got an abundance of iron now. I'm going to go ahead and make a fresh chest piece and a fresh pair of leggings, get everything rounded out completely. And with the cobblestone blocks, these are going to be building blocks once we actually enter the nether. Once we're inside, there's really no safe havens around in order to take shelter in, so we're going to have to make our own shelter. That's what that cobblestone is going to come in handy for. Now, we've also got dirt blocks as a quick building block in case we need to span any giant... Uh, gaps or crevices or anything like that because there is a ton of giant pitfalls in here. I'm going to go ahead and bring a couple extra buckets. Now I'll show you I'm going to bring our water bucket. However, in the nether, water does not work. But there is a little bit of a trick I want to show you guys. I also brought ender pearls. I have learned in the past if you happen to fall into a big pool of lava and you're nowhere near the shoreline, you can actually just hurl that ender pearl towards the shoreline and just pray to God it hits there. Ender pearls serve a couple different uses, but one of the main uses is if you just click hurling this thing through the air, you'll see that you're actually going to whoop take a tiny bit of damage and teleport to wherever the pearl lands. Like I said, you can just hurl this thing out of the lava pit onto the shoreline and I hope that that will save you from a very bad demise where you could possibly lose all of your belongings in the lava. I'm going to save those last two. Those are very rare. Those come from Endermen and those are hard enough to get. So without me rambling on any further, let me craft the rest of the gear that I said I was going to craft. And let's get over here and find a suitable location to build our nether portal and step into the nether. Well, after scouring the area to find a good location, I thought maybe in the desert, maybe up on top of a hill somewhere, because you don't necessarily want to have this thing too, too close to where you're living. And not only does it make some eerie noises coming out of it, but there is a possibility that a couple of non-hostile monsters can kind of make their way out of here 
and creep through the portal into the overworld, and you really don't want these guys inhabiting too much of your area. Then I was looking around and I thought, you know what, this is the very first small tiny ravine that we found a couple resources early on, and I think episode one or two, and I thought, you know, let's utilize this thing. This is kind of cool. So it's right off the uh, the path here next to all the stuff that we're already developing. I figured let's go ahead and do it over here. We can make a little path that kind of eerily leads into the spot where we'll put our portal. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the portal right over here. Now, the nether portal can come in a variety of different shapes, with the smallest being a 4x5 portal and the largest being a 23 by 23 portal. We are just going to go for the smallest variant for now. Maybe in the future we'll make some very large mega project where we make a really cool looking nether portal or something. But for now, I think we're going to keep this basic, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off here, like I said, and we need to make the bottom portion. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. And then we're going to go up on the sides. And then finally cap that off. And that right there is going to be the shape that we're going to be going for. So I think I'm going to use up some of this cobblestone that I just got. And I kind of just want to like inset this thing into the wall, basically. And let's see what we can come up with. Now, I'm not going to make this about decorating this thing by any means. I just want to throw in a couple blocks here just to kind of cover it up a little bit and see what we think about the location here yeah i think this is going to be pretty cool guys i think this is going to be pretty cool We're, we can definitely convert this area into like a a little area that's been overrun by nether and stuff I can, I can already envision it now but aside from that let's let's get back on track here i'm already getting distracted with more building projects <laughs> let's go ahead and fire this thing up now once you've actually have your base size and as you can see here i've got the portal completely covered up you don't need to have it exposed you don't need to have it sitting on the middle of nowhere you're going to go ahead and right click on it and that's going to fire it up and that right there is going to be the portal to the nether so we're going to go ahead and put our stuff away real quick let me go ahead since we're already right next to our base i'm going to store away that little bit of cobble and granite real quick and then let's dive in Alrighty, folks here we go let's get in here goodbye overworld let's hope for a good spawn folks all right we're in now without ever moving you always want to be very careful look down first Make sure that you're on a solid platform and then slowly move around. Take a good look at your location and make sure that you're secured first. Now, the first thing I like to do as soon as I get in is go ahead and block me off. You're going to hear a lot of eerie noises. You hear that thing out there? That is a gas, my friends. I do not wish to see him quite yet. That is a large floating ghost looking thing that will shoot fireballs at you and if it shoots at you and the fireball explodes near the nether portal it will actually deactivate the nether portal that is why i kept the flint and steel on me although it will not destroy the obsidian it will turn the portal off so you need to go back up to it with the flint and steel just like we did on the overworld click it and relight the fire so i'm going to light up a little bit here just so we can have a little bit better view of what's going on always take a look around make sure you're very careful that is a gas right there if you were real quick you would have seen him just floating away from us there and it looks like we spawned there he is that's them there and i hear another one somewhere here on this side of the wall as well we've got a lot of dripping elements here i've noticed as well i think there was one along this wall i noticed yeah here so whenever you see this there, that is an indicator that lava is directly there. The thing with lava inside of the nether is it moves twice as far and twice as fast as the overworld. So don't expect it to be very slow. When you're in the nether, you need to be very ready to run away from that lava very quickly. So this here is nether rack this is actually what we originally came here for this is going to be the fireplace material this is the material that if you set a piece of nether rack on fire like so this will burn and it will burn indefinitely until you actually left click on it and put out the fire so that's going to be awesome for our fireplace but since we're here we're going to explore just a little bit and see what we can come up with what kind of spawn did we get here because like I said, when we want to progress through, 
to the end of the game, this is exactly what it's going to take, guys. We're going to have to make some moves. We're going to have to get in here and find some stuff. So we've got a huge lava lake here. I'm going to go ahead and just come out to the edge of this and start building off a little bit of a ramp just so we can get onto safe ground. Let's see. I think I can cut this way. All right, we're going to work our way onto here. Now, this right here is soul sand. Everything in the nether has a purpose, has a design. So this right here serves a couple different purposes. The first is going to be it is going to allow you to plant a nether wart on top of it. And as well as some other new 1.16 updates like these bushes over here as well. So that is really cool. The second thing is that whenever you set soul sand on fire... It burns blue, and this will burn blue indefinitely, just like the netherrack will. So, really, really cool aesthetic. Now, there is always, always pitfalls with lava and such everywhere around here. So, be very, very cautious. The one thing I like to do whenever I'm exploring the nether is to make little beacons for myself to remember exactly where I am. So, I'm going to go ahead and plop up here. Let's go four tall. And I'm going to put a little bit of a design on it here, just on the outside. Put one in the top there. I'm going to put this, 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 and this. And that way we know that this is a main course, a main path directly back to our portal. So I'm going to go ahead and venture out here. Now there's a multitude of things that we could stumble across in here, but... My original idea is to just go ahead and set foot in here and see exactly what we got in store for us. What kind of spawn did we get? What's our locations look like? All right, so I'm lighting up this little cave that I stumbled into here, and it looks like we've got another resource that we haven't found quite yet. This right here is nether quartz. So nether quartz is used in a couple different things. It can be made into blocks. That way you can build with it. It's a really great visual, especially for modern builds. It's a white, almost opaque looking color. So that's really nice. And then on top of it, it's used in a good variety of different redstone contraption and redstone mechanics. So we'll get into some redstone builds later, but just know that it has to deal with basically electricity. Whenever mining nether quartz, it gives a ton of experience, some of the best experience in the game. So Whenever you get to the point in the game where you're enchanting and you need some levels, always remember the nether is a great place to come back. And if you're careful, mine up some nether quartz close to your portal and you can easily gain quite a few levels pretty quickly. Now these two towers are very close to each other, but I always have the rule of thumb in my mind that wherever you're placing the tower at, once you stand on it, you should be able to see the next tower. That way you're never lost. That just always seems to work very well for me, at least until I get settled into the nether and I make some more accommodations for myself. So that's why I made this one, because I couldn't see this one here from over there where I'm trying to explore. So now that I've got this one here, I can go ahead and come over here, place another tower up there, and kind of string the sight lines throughout the area. That way I can guide myself home. Let's see what we got up here, though. See another ghast over there in the distance. Don't come over here. No, no, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This might be the time, guys. Yep. All right. Now he's shooting fireballs. Now you can shoot the fireballs back at him if you hit him with a bow or with your sword, for that matter. Um, but it is very hard to hit them back melee. Oh, we got two. We've got two. All right. Now we can go ahead and just shoot them. Nice. <laughs> Perfect shot. Awesome. So I was about to say, if you shoot the fireballs directly back at them, you can actually go ahead and one-shot them and bounce it right back into their face and get an advancement for them. So that was very easily explained as I uh, as I did it there. But yeah, awesome. So we'll rid the world of one more gas there. I think I'm going to go ahead and get it up a little bit further, though, see if I can get a little bit better view on everything because what i'm really looking for is a nether fortress the nether fortress is going to house a ton of loot and a variety of different things we have to have in order to advance through the game so i am really hoping that we can possibly find one close to our spawn location but the dangers the further we go along here get greater and greater 
Well, guys, we do not have a uh, stronghold quite yet, but we do have a 1.16 nether update feature. That is what I was hoping we would find on the overworld, which would assist us coming to the nether. But now we just have the opposite. So we've actually got one here, and it comes with a chest. So let's work our way down here and see what we can find in this thing. What's the best approach here? All right, I've worked my way down. Let's see what's inside of this chest. All right, we've got a enchanted golden helmet. Now, golden items are not terrible. They offer pretty good resistance. Oh, Lord, of course you would interrupt me. See, that's what I said. It's the most inopportune times with these guys is what it is. Yeah. Now, let's see. Can I just kind of hide behind this real quick? Let's see. Grab that obsidian, a fire charge, another golden apple. Awesome some iron and a couple more pieces of flint cool 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 so this basically gives you the opportunity you'll see that they gave you some iron nuggets as well as some flint that gives you the opportunity to go ahead and craft flint and steel which will allow you to escape the nether if you're in a pinch too so now this stuff right here is crying obsidian this is actually another 1.16 update block and it's interesting, it's used in order to, uh, to make a respawn anchor for inside of the nether. So beds are not usable inside of the nether. You can actually die immediately if you're not careful with it. So as soon as you use a bed inside of the nether, it will just explode. Uh, so do not try to sleep inside of the nether. Time is irrelevant inside of the nether here. So yes, like I was saying, the Crying Obsidian is used to make that anchor, so if you want to respawn inside of the nether, you can actually craft that respawn anchor and then set your respawn point inside of here. Well, I went ahead and peeked through a small little hole over there, kind of looking out, and it looks like it's just either basalt deltas or soul sand valleys for as far as the eye can see. What we're looking for is a nether waste biome. Now, the nether waste biome is your just traditional old looking, oh, your traditional old looking uh, nether that most people are accustomed to with massive amounts of nether rack and nether quartz crystal everywhere and stuff. But I don't see too, too much of one close to us. That's what we're looking for in order to find a stronghold. That is where the strongholds appear is they will appear inside of those biomes, inside of the nether waste biome. So we're trying to find one of those. Okay, guys, before I venture too far in, I think I found something, okay? So check this out. This is where we just came through that little valley. We went by our, our tower there. We went inside of that cave. I went through the cave, up into it, and at the end, where it dead end, I ended up digging up just a little bit because I could hear this guy. I could hear these guys right here. So you've got two different types of people here. It might be hard to tell, but the first one, these are zombified piglins. So these are your traditional style mobs. These are non-hostile unless you hit them. If you hit him first, him and all of his buddies in a really wide vicinity will come charging you full force. Now, the other guys. So these guys right back there are a new feature. These are piglins. These are a feature for 1.16, and they are always hostile unless you're wearing gold armor. So we'll throw that on there. Or you want to trade gold with them. They are greedy little buggers. All they want is your riches. So you'll notice that now that we're wearing our gold helmet, they're good. They don't want to attack me or anything, so we're perfectly fine. And I unfortunately don't have any gold bars to trade with these guys. If you do have gold bars, though, you can throw it on the ground, and these guys will offer you a small trade. Uh, sometimes it's stuff like uh, gravel, and other times it can be really good stuff like enchanted books. So now that I've explained the two types of piglin boys around here, let's go ahead and work our way up here because we... Ooh, I'm going to watch these guys fight, actually. Get them! Get them! Because we actually have crossed into, if you'll notice under biome over there, a nether waste biome. So we are finally here. So I think that with that being said, that's a little cave that I crawled out of. We can start heading this way and hopefully we'll run into a fortress pretty soon. This stuff right here is pretty amazing as well. This is glowstone. 
So if you break this with a regular pickaxe, like a, let's say your iron pickaxe, you're going to get some glowstone to drop. What can we drop here? Let's drop some of that netherrack. We've got plenty of that. So you'll see that you are going to pick up some glowstone dust. Now glowstone, if you combine four pieces of glowstone and a grid, you'll actually be able to craft up a glowstone block. Again, similar to this, this is a lighting tool. So you can use these to light up things in your world. And glowstone is actually used in brewing recipes as well. Now, if you want to skip the crafting portion of this, you can actually break these with a silk touch pick or uh, another tool, and you'll actually be able to break the block entirely without having to pick up the glowstone dust. Alrighty, after picking up all the glowstone, I went ahead and put up a couple of towers right here to light up our way. That way's the back home over there, and we can also see our little tunnel that we went through the cave system with. And I put up some blocks to just span over that gap. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on and push towards the, ooh, we got some skelly friends there. Push further into the nether waste biome here because, like I said, we are on a mission to find a stronghold. I think if we find a stronghold by the end of this episode, we are in a really good position because there is a lot of goodies inside of those things. But before we press on, I want to show you a couple things. So I should have probably had the brightness turned up from the get-go. However, we're going to go ahead and slide that scale all the way up to bright. That's going to allow us to see a whole lot easier in this very, very darkened area in the nether. Also, if your computer can handle it, and I believe mine can go ahead and handle a little bit more, we're going to turn our chunk render distance up just a little bit. And the 20s, low 20s there, I think it's going to be just fine. And that will allow us to see a whole lot farther. So unless the quality of my videos just absolutely tanks here, which I think it should be fine, like I said, there's not as much to render in a lot of these places as the overworld, since the overworld is so open, you've got a giant, you know, cloud, stuff like that. But in here, you've got a lot of tight areas like this where you're really not rendering too, too much. So I don't think it'd be too bad. But I'm going to try to stick inside of the nether waste biome here, and I think I need to press up. It looks like there's a little gap up here that I can go ahead and press into, and that is one of the things I was just trying to get my point across with, is turning up the brightness and render distance. I don't know if I'd be able to see this little gap up here if I hadn't turned up my settings a little bit. So we're going to press on. Let's see if we can find that stronghold, guys. So at the top, I'm making sure to look and see where the nether waste biome is expanding to. Where exactly is all the nether rack going to? Because you're always going to find a ton of nether rack in this biome. And I know this way over here is just going to lead back to where we just came in. So I need to work my way that way. So just keep your head about you and keep pushing deeper into that nether waste biome. I guarantee you we're going to find something soon, guys. All right, you can see I've wound my way originally from there to the other side and back over, work my way up in here, and I've actually dug a small hole, stair-stepping my way up out of here, and it looks like we have gotten into a new area here. This is a Crimson Forest, another update, and this is very dangerous. In my opinion, one of the more dangerous areas to be in. This area is filled to the brim with hostile mobs like piglins and those big boys right there. Those, my friend, hiding behind that tree right there, trying to be as inconspicuous as he can, is a hoglin. Those are very, very difficult. Even with armor, they hit extremely hard. Now, they do drop a large amount of pork chops. They are an extremely oversized pig, but... They're a handful, so we are going to steer clear of the Crimson Forest. We're going to mark this on our locations, and this will soon be an adventure one day. However, today is not that day, unfortunately. Now, I know there's a considerable more nether waste biome this away, so we don't need to get discouraged if there's nothing that away over there. All we need to do is just press on this away, and hopefully we can find something, guys. Oh, look at there. We've actually ran into the secondary forest and the final forest of the uh, the nether here. That is the warped forest. So it is actually the safest biome in the nether. And so there is 
Ooh, some really cool stuff in here as well. I think we're going to go ahead and head on over there and see what we can find real quick, actually. So, yes, you're still going to have Endermen spawn in abundance inside of the Warped Forest. However, there are no hostile hoglins or anything like that dwelling in the bushes. So, you're free to kind of really look around as long as you make sure and keep your eyes low away from those Endermen. Try to keep your... Uh, Try to keep your crosshairs away from their eyeballs there, but other than that, you could definitely wander around, check out some of these cool things in here. We've got the tree block that spawns here. It's uh, interesting. You'll see it's got a very greenish teal blue hue to it. It's uh, it's interesting. It's definitely a very unique style for building. Oh lord, he is just right there. Get out of here. But we'll go ahead and pick up a couple of these forest blocks here just so we have them. We'll take them back with us. That'll be a cool little souvenir that we can go ahead and, and bring back to the overworld whenever we return. And let's uh, let's grab a couple of these uh, fungus over here as well. These fungi. These right here. Because these are going to come in handy for a plan I have in the future. Well, I explored the warp forest for a while and I came across this and that is not our fortress unfortunately. So I think that uh, <laughs> I think that we might have to head back on this episode. We've done quite a bit of exploration, but I do have a, another trick up my sleeve in order to find our fortress. So this right here, though, without any further ado, is a piglin bastion, or a piglin fortress, basically. These things come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and difficulties based on if there is a spawner in the bottom or not. Sometimes at the bottom area, there's a huge area filled with a magma cube spawner. Very difficult to overtake. And this one right here looks like it's pretty advanced. So you've got some elite piglin overlords over there just waiting to kick our butts. This is something that we'll have to take on much further in the future after we have settled into a nice diamond armor. However, we'll go ahead and take a screenshot of the location here just so we can keep that ready for a, another adventure in the future. So we've come to a position where I have ran out of nether waste biome without just tunneling randomly through a wall and hoping for the best. So I think at this position we have to come up with a new game plan and I think I have a plan of attack. That is being striders. Striders are the beings that you might have caught a glimpse of that float around in the lava fields surrounding some of these, uh, these big huge cave systems. So... They are rideable. We might be able to actually get on top of one of them, ride it across a lava lake. Ooh, my lord. I'm going to find an easier path out of here. And traverse a larger lava lake and get to a better position to find a stronghold. Since everything up here is so difficult to get around and you have to dig through all these tunnels and have everything like this to, to contend with, it's going to be a whole lot easier if we can actually just go ahead, grab a strider, and start making our way across some of these huge lava lakes really quickly. So I'm going to make my way back to the base, drop off all these belongings that we've accumulated here, and I'm going to fashion up a couple things, and I'm going to show you exactly what I got in store for us, guys. Ah, we finally made it. Thank goodness. It took a little while, but... Like I said, with following my towers in every direction, it really makes this stuff a whole, whole heck of a lot easier. So, now that I'm back home, I'm going to go ahead, like I said, stick to the game plan, sort everything away here that we don't necessarily need. I'm going to get everything organized a little bit more, and then I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to get one of these guys right there. That's what I was talking about. So, the other big boys out there are the magma cubes, of course. But these right here are striders, and those are rideable as long as you have a fungus on a stick and a saddle. And we have saddles from the loot that we found, and since we have our warp fungus here, we can actually go ahead and make a fungus on a stick. So let me get in here to the overworld again, get everything organized, and I will catch back up with you guys here in just a couple seconds. Well, I've got everything stored away finally and cleaned up my inventory a little bit. Got some repairs done, and I went ahead and uh, got a couple things ready for our 
would venture back in there. But before I do that, I noticed that I actually forgot to explain this item here that has been in my inventory the whole time. That is a cauldron. Very, very simple to make, guys. All you're going to do is just take some iron ingots, place them in a big U there in your crafting table, and that's going to make your cauldron. What that's going to do for you in the nether here is that you can go ahead and place that down in the nether and then use a water bucket on it, and that's going to fill up the cauldron. So normally in the nether, when you place down water on a surface here, it's just going to evaporate the water. You're not able to put yourself out if you're on fire. But if it's inside that cauldron here, you're going to see if I set myself on fire, it's going to use up one use of the water that's stored inside of that cauldron there. And there's up to three uses inside of each cauldron. But the downside is, is that now I cannot pick that water back up. It's already been used. But I can go ahead and use the, like I said, use the water in there two more times if need be. So I'll catch myself on fire one more time. Go in there, and then you got to position yourself just right so you can fit right inside of that cauldron there and just stand right inside of there. So that's a great way if you happen to be in the nether and are in a pinch and you're going to die because of fire damage, bring yourself a cauldron. You might, might come in handy. Now the next thing we need to discuss is our fungus on a stick. Because I've grabbed a saddle out of storage there that we already found. And now we need to make, first off, a fishing pole. I know, sounds a little odd. But you're going to take three sticks here and then two pieces of string. That's going to get you a fishing pole. Now if you have a fishing rod and a piece of warp fungus, you can actually change that into a warp fungus on a stick. So we can actually use this thing to usher along our strider through the lava fields and hopefully that will take us right to another fortress. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and store away that little bit of string and sticks there, get everything ready, and let's get back over into the nether because I am ready to find that fortress. Well, we're here, and he's still out there, way out there, unfortunately, though. So you've got a couple options here. You can either find one that's pretty close to shore. They do linger a little bit closer to shore at times. Or you can build out to them. So I don't know what's going to be the best, but... You can also lure them, similar to like animals on the surface world, with a warped fungus in your hand. And he'll actually come a little closer, but we have to be much, much closer than that. There's one, it seems maybe he's a little bit closer to a shoreline over there. I think I might go ahead and go over this side, take a peek, and let me see if I can get one that's real close. Yeah, all I'm finding on this side, unfortunately, is just a bunch of magma cubes. So this is our first encounter with these guys here, and... They, they're a little unique. The larger versions can hurt you, push you around quite a bit, but the very, very small baby ones are really nothing to worry about. You'll see that you can actually let them get up and, and kind of knock you in. They won't do anything. But the larger versions, however, will definitely mess you up. Wow, there he is. So you got to watch out for him. Oh, no. We got to get out of here. You know, they split pretty <laughs> pretty quickly, so we got to keep on our guard here. we got to break this guy down so he's not so much of a threat. There we go. Oh, no, I hear a gas, too. Now it's not the time, Mr. Gast. All right, now I'm just down to all the small ones. And once you get them down to the small ones there, you'll see that they start dropping magma cream. Magma cream is absolutely a necessity in the game because it is a way to make fire resistance potions whenever you get a brewing stand which is something we need to delve into very soon because potions of fire resistance will make you completely immune to fire and you can actually even swim in lava, as a matter of fact. So we definitely need to get that soon. But as far as our mission now, I think I need to get out here and lure one of these guys a little closer. Success! We have got one. I just had to build out a little bit here and there was actually this little fella hanging out right over here with this tiny little magma cube friend too, I guess. Hi, goodbye. So <laughs> let's be real careful We're right out here on this little inlet, but I think I can go ahead and swap out my saddle real quick. Let me put this saddle on him and then I can get on top. Yeah, perfect, there we are. We're on top of him. And now if you hold the warp fungus on a stick in front of you, you'll notice that he actually takes off and he'll follow that warp fungus. A nice little advantage to this actually is if you right click, you'll actually make him speed up a little bit. So now he will actually be a little bit quicker as we get across these lava fields here, which is absolutely awesome. Look at us go now, guys. 
So I'm going to go ahead and roam around on these lava fields, and I think we should have no problem finding us another stronghold here pretty soon. Now, keep in mind, pro tip, do not crouch when you're on this young guy here, because that's how you dismount from him, just like you would be on a horse. So be very careful. Do not be out in the middle of a lava field and accidentally crouch because it will end very, very bad for you. Whenever you get to a position where you want to get off of them, just go ahead and put over to a nice empty slot on in your inventory, jump off of them, and you'll see that he's free to go. Now, Warp Fungus is your friend. That'll keep him close by. And you'll see that he gets a little cold when he's out of the lava. He likes his, uh, he likes his uh, bubble baths. So <laughs> let's do him a favor, jump back in here. And like I said, I definitely want to find us another stronghold, guys. It is time. So let me roam around here for a little while, and I'll be right back with you as soon as I find something interesting. Oh, no. No, no, no. Don't you shoot us off of here. Oh, my God. Oh. We made it, guys. We're here. We're here. We finally found one, but it's just at the worst time. <laughs> I can't believe this guy's shooting us right now. Well, this is what we're looking for, guys. This is another fortress right here. This is incredible. It is buried pretty deep inside of the netherrack walls, though. That's crazy. So let's find an adequate area to go ahead and land on shore because we need to go ahead and store this guy away. I don't have another saddle. And we need to make sure that we can find him again really easy. All right, I've got our little friend that's kind of in this little cubby here. I'm going to go ahead and throw him a little bucket of lava to keep him warm in there. Don't worry, we're going to be back, I promise. So <laughs> let me make sure that he's completely secured in here. And I'm going to throw up a couple torches here to signify this is exactly where our little friend is. And I think it's about time we start delving up into this thing, guys. It didn't really take too, too long to find this thing after I ended up getting that strider. Like I said, whenever you can ride on top of the lava everywhere, it makes pretty quick work of these adventures. So I think the easiest way up into this thing, though, is going to be just go ahead and move it up through the nether rack. And I think I can get maybe on top of this tower here. Let's see what I can do, guys. Oh! Well, we got our achievement. I'm somewhere very close, I'll tell you that, but I haven't actually like, tapped in. So I've got to be maybe right above it? I don't know, guys. Let me dig around here. That's pretty crazy. I got the, the advancement there without actually being inside of here. Now, I do hear a lot of steps this way. I think I'm going to continue my journey up. I think that might be my... Oh, look at there. I almost planned that perfectly. That is awesome. That is really cool, guys. All right, we are in. This is a nether fortress. Oh, don't scare me there, buddy. Don't scare me. So we have got a lot of adventuring to do in here, guys. A lot of adventuring. And it's going to be a really great thing to do next episode. Ha <laughs> ha! I know, you're mad. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I gotta do it to you guys. If we ended up doing the entire Nether Fortress this episode, this episode would run a million minutes long, I swear. It'd, be, it'd just be ridiculous. So, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here, guys, and we are gonna dive headfirst into this thing next episode. We're gonna pick up right here, right where we left off, and I'm going to explain in full detail exactly what entails these nether fortresses, what we're going to get into, and how we can be victorious. So, stick around, guys. Episode 7 is going to be a blast. But for right now, I really appreciate you stopping by, hanging out with me, and watching. If you liked what you've seen, please drop me a like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.